Hello, Campus. We are going to be talking about a few things other than ionic product, which can affect the solubility of stuff in um, when it's dissolving. Um, the first thing of, of those we're going to talk about is complex ions. Complex ions are something you may recall from previous years of chemistry. Um, just to give you a refresher, a complex ion is a, just basically an ion that consists of more than one thing, specifically um, a metal ion with one or more ligands, and a ligand is a, another ion or a molecule which is bonded to the metal ion. Um, and the whole thing has got a charge. I know that sounds complicated. Here's an example. Copper ammonium is a complex ion, and it has a charge of plus two. Um, in that complex ion, there are four ammonias bonded to a copper, and that gives the whole thing a charge of two plus. Um, each ammonia doesn't have a charge. Copper has a charge of two plus. The whole thing has got a charge of two plus. Um, confusingly, uh, complex ions are indicated by a bracket. So if you see a bracket, that bracket could mean this is a complex ion, or it could mean I'm talking about the concentration of this thing. Um, and you have to rely on context to work out which one is which. If you are talking about the concentration of a complex ion, which I don't think you ever will in this class, you will see double brackets. Um, and the important things about complex ions is that they are generally soluble, um, i.e. they generally dissolve fairly well. Um, and if they, uh, and sometimes things will um, dissolve uh, more easily if they're able to form a soluble complex ion. So if you're dealing with something that's got a transition metal, those are the trans transition metals are the ones in the middle of the periodic table that um, are more likely to form complex ions. You could have changes in the solubility of the stuff you're dealing with. So for example, if you've got a little bit of sodium hydroxide and you add it to a zinc chloride solution, you get a white precipitate of zinc hydroxide. That's not a complex. But that zinc hydroxide here can then react, so again, you've got zinc hydroxide, with more hydroxide to form the zinc hydroxide complex. So it goes from zinc hydroxide with two hydroxides attached to it to a zinc hydroxide with four hydroxides attached to it, and that is a complex. Um, so what you would see what happen when this happens is you would have um, your zinc chloride solution, you'd add a small amount of sodium hydroxide and you'd get the um, a precipitate appearing. And then as you continued adding sodium hydroxide, you would see the precipitate disappearing. You may or may not recall this from doing a level two testing for ions in solution um, experiment. So that's one thing that can affect the um, solubility. If you see a, if you are needed to do a problem with this, you would be given a lot of information about how it works. I don't think I've ever seen one in an assessment. Here are some examples of complex ions, aluminium, lead, zinc, copper, silver, and iron. As you can see, those are all transition metals, again, from the middle of the periodic table. Um, again, these come up very, very infrequently. If you see one, you'll be given lots of guidance on how to deal with it. The other thing that can affect the solubility of stuff is pH. If you recall, um, pH is just a measure of the concentration of hydroxide and um, H plus ions. So if there is something that has a pH that is greater than seven, that means it has a higher concentration of hydroxide um, and it's a lower concentration of H plus. Yeah, so if you have something with a pH of greater than seven, it means there's a lot of hydroxide in solution. If you have something with a pH of less than seven, it means you have less hydroxide, but more um, hydrogen ions, vice versa as well. Um, so if you are dissolving something that has a hydroxide already, such as a metal hydroxide, that hydroxide is a common ion. So if you have a pH of greater than seven of the thing you're dissolving in, or dissolving hydroxide in, that's gonna have lower solubility and vice versa, pH of uh, less than seven equal, means greater solubility. Basically, if there's already hydroxide or um, H plus ions present in the solution because of the pH, um, that will affect the solubility in ways that you can predict because of Le Chatelier's principle and the common ion effect. Um, here's an example, calcium hydroxide um, is in equilibrium with calcium and hydroxide for the case of S that we can calculate right, right here. Um, 
if the pH is greater than seven, um, the concentration of calcium will decrease to keep the K sub S constant. Um, and if it is greater than seven, then the concentration of calcium will increase. Um, basically, it is it's not a uh, not a phenomenon you haven't seen before. It's just basically reminding you that pH means concentration of hydroxide or concentration of H plus ions. Um, and also, if a solute reacts with either H plus or OH minus, um, the that um, reaction can cause the the equilibrium to move as well. I.e., um, if you have something that reacts with an acid, such as calcium carbonate, um, that calcium carbonate is going to sorry the carbonate is going to react with H plus ions to decrease the concentration of carbonate, which causes the reaction to um, for uh, to move in the opposite direction. Um, again, if you encounter any problems that use these, they will give you a lot of information and support.